much appreciated and good afternoon everybody. Um, so welcome to this webinar, Implications of the Australian uh, Prudential Standard CPS 234. Very nice catchy title, um, but needless to say there is um, a lot of information within the actual standard itself that we can uh, we can take a lot from and hopefully throughout this presentation today you'll you'll be able to take some of this information away that may be useful and maybe some uh, some guidance that we can help provide so before i um before i go into the actual standard itself what i want to do is is really look at um the the global landscape around compliance before we start applying that and, and working out why CPS 234, as Sec mentioned earlier on, uh, why that was actually brought into force. So in the global compliance landscape, organizations, as, as, as tell us, as, as all of you who have joined this session, um, have to comply or adhere to multiple different standards or regulations. Now, those standards could be international standards, uh, such as PCI, if you're in the uh, banking and financial services sector handling credit card information. Um, some are national standards, um, such as our own uh, Privacy Amendment and the Privacy Act here locally in Australia. Um, and also, they could be industry specific. Uh, so we've got an awful lot that we, um, as, as organizations, that we have to take into consideration when we are conducting our business. And that brings us to um, some of the challenges that, that we have to work out how to get around and comply with all of these different regulations, um, because sometimes complying with one regulation may actually interfere or break one of the other uh, regulations that you're, you're having to work through. So let's go into some of the, uh, the worldwide um, regulations that are applicable in different regions. Now, this is not a designed to be a completely exhaustive list, um, but hopefully will give you an idea of, of some of the things that are actually out there that organizations such as ourselves uh, would actually have to comply with. So obviously in, in here right now we have the Americas, and there's a lot of information that's in here regarding some of the, the different um, regulations and standards that need to be complied with. Now, I think America has been historically quite a heavily regulated um, region, especially with, um, with California, uh, kicking off this back, I think it was back in the 90s, uh, with mandatory breach notification regulations and so on. And those, those things have, have kind of um, morphed into deeper and stronger standards with uh, some with with teeth and some without teeth. Um, so when I say with teeth, I mean there are generally some kind of financial penalty or other penalty that can be applied if, um, if you're found to be in breach of, of any one of those regulations. Now from an EMEA perspective, so Europe, Middle East and Africa, um, obviously there are, there are different um, regulations in there as well. Now, I think one of the ones that we've uh, probably all heard of most recently is GDPR, so the General Data um, Privacy Regulation that was brought into uh, into play in, I think it was May of last year. Now, those are although that is a is quite a, a far-reaching um, data privacy standard. Uh, where there are big implications for organizations in terms of how they actually manage to um, adhere to data privacy principles. Now, one of the things that GDPR does actually bring out is, is some information around um, being able to let organizations forget their uh, customer data. So if, if a if a customer actually called up, uh, say, an insurance organization and said, look, I'm no longer a customer of yours, I want you to delete all of my information under GDPR, um, that organization has to have a process in place in order to be able to address that. So there's a lot of things that are coming into, um, into these standards that whilst um, are, are important, we also need to put in maybe new processes and, and, and systems that allow us to be able to comply with those. 
Now, obviously, in Australia, um, uh, we had the notifiable data breach scheme introduced back in February of last year. And I note, and, and this is nothing. This is nothing new. That um, during that initial sort of 12-month period, um, the number of data breach disclosures has has increased. Um, considerably, and I think we're well over the thousand mark now. Whereas prior to February last year, I think there were only 63 voluntary um, disclosures of, of data breaches. So as we can see, there, there is some requirements now here locally where organizations must um, divulge when they've had some kind of data security incident. So we're, we're living in a, in a world where Compliance is becoming um, more and more, and we have to do more and more in order to try and address that. But clearly, the thing that's driving a lot of this compliance is the risk from cyber attack or some kind of malicious outsider or insider, for that fact, um, acting upon uh, their, their, their want or need to infiltrate an organization and extract information. So when we look at the information that to hand, obviously we've got um, our, our good friend Google, and Google can provide us with the ability to search for a lot of information um, that's out there in the public domain. And as vendors, such as Talos and a, and a number of other vendors around the world, we all try and provide um, useful reports on an annual or biannual basis on the state of various different um, aspects of our of our world. Um, so, for example, we've recently just um, released a report on the state of um, uh, of, of identity and access management, and uh, that information is is freely available across the internet. Um, one of the one of the good reports that I always like to read personally. Is um, is the Ponemon customer data breach report because in that it actually puts together the tangible and intangible costs of what it actually means to an organisation should the unfeasible actually happen. So, and you can you can then look at what are the sort of the sort of threat vectors that organisations are are facing, and then working at how do we try and either bolster the existing security controls that we have or implement new ones to try and fend off these new kinds of attacks. So Ponemon, and, uh, and I've taken some uh, data from that for that report for 2019 into here, just so you can um, gain a little bit of a picture. Now, when I look at um, the, the market itself. This is one of the things that I pulled out of the report, which I thought was very, very interesting. Um, is the odds of experiencing a data breach are actually increasing. So either we are getting, we're not making any progress with regard to how we are protecting information, or the threats from outside or even internally are becoming more advanced, and. It may well also be that we have not yet discovered that we have already been breached in some way, shape, or form. But the interesting point in here is that is a kind of the very last couple of sentences, in that as we sit today, one third of organisations are more likely um, to be breached within two years than they were in 2014. So effectively, let's let's work that through. That means in the last four or five years, we are now we now 33% more likely to have some kind of data breach. And these are these are the things that I, I really wanted to, to bring into the fore um, by providing you with the, the the sort of the industry awareness that kind of puts the meat on the bones of why organizations and regulators such as APRA pull together some of these standards. Uh, because obviously they are concerned for their members and their members' ability to continue to um, address the potential cyber threats um, in the best possible way. Now, in terms of 
<coughs> excuse me, the actual cost of a data breach by industry. I thought it was interesting to to, to put up a, a slide on this. So we can actually see where things are, are kind of standing. Now this is this is an average cost um, across the world by vertical. So in here you can clearly see that um, healthcare is a very large proponent of um, of the cost of a data breach. So if some kind of healthcare organisation did actually get breached in some way, shape, or form, or lost some medical records then they, they stand to have the largest penalties imposed upon them and also have a bigger job to do in terms of remediation. And that could be including new technologies into their mix to try and um, stop something like this happening again in the future. Or even, and probably even including, the ability to add the intangible costs. So, what, ha what, ha what has to happen from a consumer perspective, from a, an awareness campaign, um, an identity monitoring scheme that might need to be put into place, um, and all of the marketing material and awareness that we then have to put into action in order to try and um, appease the market and also protect the end users themselves. Um, even though financial services is, is a very, very heavily regulated environment. It's still rating as number two on this list. Because obviously, if somebody is waiting to, or trying to get into an organization to extract information, they want to be able to monetize that information in some way, shape, or form. And financial services records are clearly a, a target for people like that. Now, when I, I look at all of these, uh, these different industry segments, the way that I look at data security is really from who has the biggest, um, the, the biggest problem if they did have a breach of some kind. And, and in my mind, those are the organizations that have a lot of consumers or, or holding a lot of consumer information. Now, when we look at APRA regulated entities, obviously we're looking at um, financial services institutions, we're looking at insurance providers, we're looking at superannuation providers as well. So that, that pretty much encompasses um, every single person here in, in Australia. Now, if those organizations um, are facing increased threat from outside, then we need to be able to evolve in order to be able to address some of those new threats that, that are coming up. 